Guardian Unlimited. Small world. The Hecko! The Hecko! I love what you've done with the curtain, love. Hello! Welcome to Thursday's edition of The Heckle. We've an all-singing, all-dancing show today. And there'll also be some talking. Naturally. Anyway, you can expect to hear the following on today's show. Raped to death by a colossal uh. squid. I didn't want to disappoint you. What is wrong with these people? <laughs> and today we're coming to you from the Royal Mile, where the sun's come out, people are smiling, and the leafleters are hovering around us like flies round a corpse. Lovely flies round a lovely corpse, obviously. And from where I'm standing, I can see a clown with a tartan tammy doing amusing things with an umbrella, and a man in a suit of armour handing out some flowers. The festival's pretty much in full swing now, but many acts find audience numbers unpredictable. I mean, like, this is great. This is a lovely full audience. Uh, you know, I did the gig the other day to 12 people. And, and today I had lunch with my agent. And she was saying, do you want to know the numbers for your show tonight? I said, no, just tell me the fucking names, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, yeah, you, know, you know where you fit. And it's hard as well, because I... I came across the courtyard yesterday and somebody gave me a flyer for my own show, you know. <laughs> And I didn't want to disappoint her because I needed that enthusiasm to sell the show. I just said, is he any good? She said, I think so. Uh... So that was John Bishop. Now, Brian, you went to see John Bishop the other day. Who is he and what does he want? <laughs> he's a scouser. No, I And he, he's, he's making this show all about the experience that led him to giving up his real job and having a punt at being a full-time stand-up comic. He's got the most popular badges on the fringe because lots of people have little lapel badges, but his one, which does just say, stick your job up your arse. People seem to be particularly keen on that. For yeah, some I think reason. if you call your show "Stick Your Job Up Your Arse," you're going to have a lot of people identifying <laughs> with the sentiment. Absolutely, yeah. My favourite heckle was at a university gig, and when I walked out, just as I was about to start, one thing was heard in the silence, and it was this old lady leaning across to her elderly husband and whispering in what she thought was an inaudible tone. He's so thin. I'm here in the Walkabout pub. We've chosen the Walkabout because we're talking to Australians. We've got the lovely Adam Hills, the lovely Heath Franklin, Sammy J, and Brendan Burns. And I didn't get a lovely, did I? No, you didn't get I lovely. I didn't get a lovely. You're never I was get waiting a lovely. for that. The lovely Adam Hills, and I thought, <laughs> I'm at the end. It's quite nice because I don't really know Heath or Sammy, but I do know Adam and Brendan, and they're sat either end of the table. And so we've got Adam, who's the lovely side of uh, Australian comedy, and Brendan, who's the evil, nasty side of Australian comedy. I think comedy. that's grossly unfair. <laughs> I think from now and you should be described as the adjectiveless Brendan Burns. Yeah, I'd like that. Now, obviously, we've got you all here in the walkabout because you're Australian and we wanted to make you feel at home. Because nothing makes us feel more at home than being in a pub with the cheesiest Australiana on the walls, surrounded by the people we left Australia to get away from. This bears a striking resemblance to my bedroom, so I feel, <laughs> I feel quite at home. Every, the giant AFL posters and litres and litres of beer. You've done your bedroom out as a chain pub. <laughs> yes, I have. Heath, I don't know you, because I know some of the boys, and I don't know you. You're over here doing Break and Morant. I think she's hitting on you. Yes, he's young, he's attractive. Tell and he's me got more. a bedroom that smells of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I love. I'm so ignorant about Australian culture, right? So I don't know Break and Morant, which is the play that you're doing. So tell me, oh. who was Break and Morant? Some people have said, oh, like, you know, the Australian Braveheart, stuff like that. Is that true? In, in a way, Break and Morant uh, was the first film that was shown to us in year eight, you know, by our film studies uh, yeah. teacher. And it was the most unpopular decision because the film itself is a very sort of well, to, to a 14-year-old boy who only wants to look at pictures of girls, it's, it's a very <laughs> slow, sort of dusty old film. But oh, I was riveted. Well, you can say that, Brendan, but you're Brendan, so... <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the um, backstage atmosphere is more like a comedy club, or are you quite theatrical? <laughs> are you all sitting there with hair nets on doing your I makeup? Think, uh, Tom Daly, the, the guy who's a classically trained <laughs> Royal Shakespeare company, on the first day he nearly cried, and Phil Nichols has been very good at calming him down. because These are the two directors, Tom and Phil, are both directing you. Yes, yes, and like Phil, as you know, is for the, the comedy background, and Tom is this proper serious Royal Shakespearean. And just like the first day, we're all just mucking about, just ripping the piss, and you can see him just looking and just going, What is wrong with these people? <laughs> this is just such a clusterfuck. You can bleep me, don't worry, it's a podcast. <laughs> no, clusterfuck's fine, I've checked. I've been saying it constantly, so <laughs> exactly. I Exactly, that's what you wanted to call your show. <laughs> there are no women in the play, are there? Do you think, is, is it a bit too much of a wave of testosterone? That's, it's very homoerotic. There's a lot of wrestling and buggery. <laughs> <laughs> 
there's a lot of towel flicking going on in the change room. So I, I, and, uh, I do pride myself on being the skinniest man at the festival, so I think I bring down the levels of testosterone. Quite yeah, <laughs> you're quite feminine. It's nice. I think it's almost easier for Sammy at this stage to name people whose genitals he hasn't touched. In the room. Thank you very much. Good luck with break and rent. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, comedians doing straight drama. Are they having a laugh? <laughs> It's very popular now, isn't it? Everyone's I think, at it. I think it's very successful though. I was in Montpellier over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was a comedian heavy thing a few years ago. And how was your experience of that? It was great, yeah. I think well, comedians are quite easy to work with because they're, uh, you know, don't take themselves too seriously, I was going to say, but clearly that's nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> what about the very special technical skills that actors spend years honing? Yeah, possibly... I know. I think if I was an actor, I'd be really annoyed. There's so many great actors up here at the Fringe, and yet people will go and see a play with comedians in more readily than, than they'll see a play with proper trained actors in, I guess. And apparently Dame Judy is coming up with a stand-up show next year. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> She's hilarious. Lucy, you've been very busy today. You've been drinking with the Australians, and you've also been hanging out with Sister Cycle. That sister psycho, she's not a woman. She's a robot, and I'm a good one. Oh, if only she were wooden, then we could set fire. I have to speak to see Sister Psycho. Sister Psycho, yes. And I have to say, it looked like a huge amount of fun. Was it fun to do the cast? Yes. 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 Embarrassingly. Yes. Yes. They're all thrilled. And <laughs> so I suppose I should talk first to the creator of Sister Psycho. The mastermind, I like to think. <laughs> yeah, the evil genius behind it, Danielle Ward. Yes. I had this idea, and then I thought, oh, I'll just see how ridiculous I can make it by just chucking plot points at it. I thought, I'll make her a robot, that'll be really good. Then I thought, I'll make her an arms dealer, that'll be really good. Then I thought, I'll put a sea monster in it somewhere, a reference to it, because that'll be really good. And what you see is a work of wonder before you, <laughs> so it's worked. I find myself here, all the things I've never done. I've never put my foot down. Never put my foot down. Except that one time with John Leslie. <laughs> Yes. Who plays? Martha Meadows. Mm -hmm. The heron. And I was only cast because I got the same first syllable. Well, it yeah. certainly had nothing to do with talent. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we talk to the, the musical maestro of the piece? <laughs> Hello. Martin White. Hello, Lucy. Hello. And Hello. You, you are actually in the show itself, aren't you? I am, yes. I'm, I'm in it playing the mute monk. I just look scary and yeah. play scary chords on a church organ. You actually look a bit sweeter than you look scary. Do I? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you look like a little turtle. Do I? <laughs> I'm doing my best to look really <laughs> scary. I know, it's just your face. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to introduce us to your marvellous cast? Uh, well, this is uh, my very best friend, <laughs> Katie Wicks. Hello, my name's Katie Wicks, and I play Sister Rocky. I'm Colin Holt, and I play <laughs> a series of characters, <laughs> a grandma and a boy. I'm Anna Crilly, and I play Sister <laughs> <laughs> Prue. And that's our director, Chris George, over there. Say hello, Chris. Hello. Hey, Very good man. <laughs> the best. The best. The best. It's a lovely show in a lovely atmospheric venue. So thank you very much for entertaining me. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't just, it wasn't just you. Oh, it was you laughing. <laughs> we had one audience member. Don't act so surprised you've lived here all your life. When the eldest girls are 21, they marry Jesus. They call me his wife. them from the deep. A giant octopus will creep and have sex with our animals and eat us in our sleep. That simply isn't possible. We're landlocked from all sides. 50 miles to the ocean, 50 miles from the tide. We won't listen to your logic, we're not interested in facts. That's just the kind of attitude that makes sea monsters attack. <laughs> so you see, Martha, you've got to go. Otherwise, you'll be banned as a terrorist. I'm sure it'll be bearable. Well? <laughs> well, I certainly. 
certainly don't want to be the reason my family are raped to death by a colossal ah. squid. <laughs> That's it for another heckle. Tomorrow we round up the week around the Guardian's kitchen table with comedian Marcus Brigstock and our very own Lynn Gardner. Amongst other things, we'll be discussing the free fringe and we'll have a walk around the Warhol exhibition with the comedian Simon Munnery. Hurrah! So till then, cheerio! cheerio. Guardian Unlimited.